Kristen Bertel is ready to ring in the new year, but if you'll be celebrating with her, you better make sure you're feeling well. If you're coughing, wear your mask or you're uninvited. Bertel and her friend Sherry say even three years into the pandemic, they're still taking their precautions. I just want to um, enjoy the holidays as best I can, but also when I plan it, know um, how big will the group be that's going to be there. But other Granite Staters say they aren't as concerned. We're out having fun. It feels like back to normal. The worry of some, though, isn't in vain because across the country and in New Hampshire, COVID and flu illnesses have been straining hospitals. This is before we even get to New Year's Eve. State data shows COVID-related hospitalizations have more than doubled in the last week, reaching their highest level since March. What we're worried about, people coming together, many people with COVID, not testing, not staying home when they're sick, and leading to a surge into January. And with new COVID subvariants on the rise and flu transmission persistent, epidemiologist John Brownstein says it's critical people still follow that familiar COVID playbook. We don't want to get overconfident. He says staying home if you're sick, getting tested, and masking in crowded areas will all help you stay well. Make sure that you're preparing, especially for your most vulnerable participants in any celebration. And as 2023 approaches, Kristen and Sherry say they'll be celebrating, but with an added caution. Don't stop, don't stop life, just be protective. And experts also say if you're sick, the best thing you can do this New Year's Eve is just stay home. Live in the studio, Ariel Metropolis, WMUR News 9. Ariel, thank you. DHHS tonight responding to a statement from Dennis Eckersley and his family about the incident involving their daughter Alexandra and her newborn baby. DHHS says in part, quote, expanded community-based services for people experiencing mental illness and substance misuse have been implemented in the past five years, including New Hampshire Rapid Response, a centralized access point with mobile crisis response that was launched on January 1st, 2022, and the doorway system that is accessible on a 24-7 basis to help individuals dealing with substance abuse. Members of the Eckersley family say they did everything they could to help their daughter with her mental illness, including hospitalization and several residential programs. Alexandra Eckersley is charged with endangering the welfare of a child, reckless conduct, and falsifying physical evidence. A suspect is now behind bars in Pennsylvania, accused in the murders of four college students in Idaho. Next on News 9, how they tracked him down and what happens next. And years of former President Trump's tax returns now public. What we're learning about his finances while in office. But first, let's go to Jacqueline Thomas with your wake up weather. Yeah, waking up tomorrow, it's going to be a mild start. Temperatures in the 30s to near 40 degrees with a mostly cloudy sky. And through the day, we'll stay dry initially, but then showers arrive as we head towards Saturday evening in time to ring in the new year. A look at the timeline of those showers and when the rain moves out coming up. Stay connected to news happening across New Hampshire. Get local stories, breaking news, and weather right here on the WMUR app. Download it today.
Tonight, a nearly two month search for a suspected killer is over. Police say Brian Koberger stabbed four University of Idaho students to death. He's now being held without bond thousands of miles away in Pennsylvania. Reporter Mike Valerio explains how police tracked him down. 28 year old Brian Koberger, a graduate student studying criminal justice at Washington State University, has been arrested in Pennsylvania in connection with the murders of four University of Idaho students. A criminal complaint was filed yesterday here in Lataw County, charging the defendant, Mr. Koberger, with four counts of first degree murder, in addition to felony burglary, which involves entering the residence with the intent to commit the crime of murder. Sources briefed on the investigation say authorities narrowed their focus to Koberger after tracing his ownership of a white Hyundai Elantra seen in the area of the killings around the time of the deaths. We've received over 19,000 tips and we've conducted over 300 interviews. The November killings have rocked the small college town of Musco, Idaho, which had not recorded a murder since 2015. These tragic murders took four young, vibrant lives from our community. Nothing we do can bring them back. The only thing that we can do in law enforcement to honor their memories that we know of is to bring this to a successful conclusion. The home where the four students were murdered is still considered an active crime scene. Police say they've been working with property management services to eventually hand it back over to them and have been remediating the home by removing potential biohazards and other harmful substances used to collect evidence. But now with Koberger's arrest. The house cleanup. Um, has been halted, and that came by a legal request from the court. Mike Valerio, WMUR News 9. Six years of former President Trump's redacted tax returns are now public. The Democratic-led House Ways and Means Committee published thousands of pages of Trump's tax documents from 2015 to 2020. They reveal he paid little or no income tax for several years after claiming millions of dollars in losses. Trump, who has been fighting to shield his returns from the public for years, is blasting the release. Now, meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas with your Stormwatch 9 forecast. Well, heading through today, we saw those warm temperatures, some record highs in a few spots across the state, and the mild conditions stick around as we head into the start of the new year. Right now, a quiet scene across Manchester. The wind very light, calm conditions for most of the state, and that's going to be the case overnight tonight, too. Manchester sitting at 49 degrees, and we're seeing partly cloudy skies, some spots a little clearer, others seeing a few more clouds, and so there's there's a variation in our temperatures out there at this time. 51 in Portsmouth, but 38 in Concord. So depending where you are, a little cooler or a little milder, and it's going to be one of those nights where some of the valley locations likely stay uh, on the cooler side. And as you head up in elevation, you actually end up with the milder temperatures this time around. But there's still plenty of mild air in place along the East Coast. 54 in DC right now, and those mild temperatures stick around over these next few days. So we're right back in it again tomorrow and tomorrow we're tracking that chance for showers. You can see how those showers extend along a frontal boundary off to our west. Eventually this area of low pressure is going to track off to our west and then move northeastward through the weekend and that's going to bring us those showers as we head towards tomorrow evening. But for the time being, we're quiet. We did see a couple of light showers and sprinkles in northern parts of the state earlier today and this evening. Berlin had reported a light shower, but as we head overnight, we'll be mainly dry and there will be a few clouds overhead. So tonight lows generally stay in the 30s, near 40 in some spots. And then tomorrow we're right back into the 40s and 50s for highs. So it's going to be another mild day, but the rain moves in, especially as we head through the evening hours and Saturday night. So if you do have plans to be outdoors to ring in the new year, you might want to include the rain gear in those plans. Most of the day, though, will be dry. So here's the hour by hour forecast as we head through through the day Saturday, clouds will be thickening up. So there may be a break of sunshine early and then the clouds really take over. And then through the afternoon by three, four o'clock or so, we'll start to see some light showers move in and it becomes steady as we head through the evening. Six, seven, eight o'clock PM. We'll likely see some uh, steadier showers across the state. So if you have dinner plans tomorrow night, you're going to want to have the rain gear ready. 
As we head towards midnight, there likely will still be some light scattered showers and spots or some areas of patchy drizzle. Also a thing to keep in mind is there likely will be areas of patchy fog that develop late tomorrow night. So if you're driving after midnight or late, you want to just, you know, use caution, maybe give yourself a little extra time, go a little slow. And then as we head into Sunday morning, this quickly winds down, tapers off. Far north, there could be a lingering mixed or snow shower on the back side of this, but we're not talking much as far as rainfall totals go. Just a couple tenths of an inch, maybe up to a half inch in spots that get a downpour or two. Otherwise, rest of the seven day forecast, you'll notice mild temperatures stick around 40s and 50s for highs into next week. All right, Jackie, thank you. Making the most of a travel disaster. After the break, the woman working to help fellow flyers she'd never even met. With Southwest Airlines flights back on track tonight, we're hearing stories of the travelers who helped each other through a rough few days. Stacy Olmos has the story of one woman who passed the time in the airport by looking out for strangers. There's bags everywhere. There's bags fully filling the space between the escalators. I've never seen anything like it. Brittany Lubier Vervish is describing the moment she came down the escalator at Tampa International Airport the day after Christmas when her flight to Denver was canceled. We talked to a couple in front of us and some ladies behind us, and they've been going back and forth to the airport for three to four days each to try to retrieve their luggage. So they're like, yeah, we had to go buy all new clothes. With more than 10,000 Southwest flights canceled across the country Christmas week, hundreds of thousands of passengers separated from their checked bags and everything they own inside. They just called it up. It was a blue one, Rodriguez. One of them, Riverview resident Glenn Rodriguez. When we landed, actually with United, because we were originally booked with Southwest, 
Uh, we landed, there was a line three hours later.